What's up ladies and gents, how you doing? Thank you very, very much for checking out the video. Uh, and welcome back to Colour Craft, or if this is your first time here, uh, welcome to Colour Craft, the learning bushcraft channel with me, um, Colo, or my real name's Alex. Um, so today, I'm going to be, as the title says, I'm going to be customising and modifying a tomahawk. Uh, a tomahawk is a really cool piece of kit that I wanted for quite a while. I've just never gotten around to buying one. Uh, but I've changed that, so I have bought one. Uh, I was looking around on the internet trying to find a, you know, a half decent one that's not overly expensive, uh, namely because I don't have a huge amount of cash to spend. Um, and I came across a company called Cold Steel, who produce loads and loads of different types of axes, tomahawks, uh, like really old kind of Viking style stuff as well, which looks really cool. Um, and the reviews that I read about them, um, generally speaking, said that they are like the materials that they use are really good. Like the heads are made from like proper, really, really good steel. Um, but when they are put together, because um, you know Cold Steel is kind of a mass production company, they're, they're put together in kind of a bit of a rough shot, sort of really fast and not particularly good kind of way. Uh, so the reviews are saying things like the heads are usually uh, loose on the handles, they don't fit quite right, um, and the blades are really dull. But if you're willing to um, put a bit of time and effort into refining your, your hawk, you actually end up with a really good, uh, high quality piece of kit. Um, so that's what I've decided to do. So here it is. This is my Cold Steel um, Trail Hawk Tomahawk. The handle is 22 inches long and it's made from hickory. And the head, as you might expect, is, is steel. Uh, and consistent with the reviews, um, the blade is completely and utterly dull. It's not sharp at all. And if you can hear this, it is loose. Um, so the plan today is to is to modify my hawk. So I'm going to take the head off. I'm going to see if I can take the paint off entirely because I really don't like it. Um, I'm going to sand down um, and refine the handle. Um, yeah, I'm going to sand it. I'm going to stain it, and I'm going to see if I can customize it a bit and put some uh, some patterns into the handle as well. Um, I am not a particularly artistic person, so I'm not going to be able to draw like really cool dragons and stuff like that on it as much as I would like to. So. Just be going with a really, really simple pattern, um, but one that is unique to me. So that's the plan for today. So I'm going to do it outside because it's a nice day. Um, I've got all day, you know, I'm in no rush. What with all the uh, stay-at-home stuff that's going on at the moment, I'm really, really, really um, on board with doing that. So I'm really happy to sit outside and work on this, um, and I'll bring you along with me as we go. So I uh, hope you enjoy it, and hopefully by the end of it, we'll have a really, really cool, unique Tom Hawk, um, and hopefully you guys might be inspired to go and try this yourself. Uh, I'll take you through it step by step. Um, I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos on how to do this. Um, I'm not too bothered if I muck it up because, as I say, it's not a drastically expensive hawk. Um, but yeah, but I thought it might be quite fun. So, hope you enjoy it. Come along with me. Let's go. Okay, so I think I'm about ready to go. I'm all set up, I've got various tools, got my toolbox and stuff. Uh, the sun is shining, which is absolutely lovely. Um, so uh, we might as well crack on on my makeshift table. <laughs> so the first thing I need to do is get the head off, and for that I need an Allen key, because it's got a hexagonal uh, screw. So uh, I'll grab an Allen key and we'll, um, we'll get on with it. came off really easily. Nice. Okay, so I'm gonna put that to one side for now and we're gonna concentrate on the on the head. So here it is. As I said before the blade is completely and utterly dull. Um, so I'm just gonna use sandpaper in an attempt to take off this paint. Um, the other thing that I'll need to do with this is on the inside here. Um, the steel is not particularly smooth. There's a few little burrs there, uh, and on the inside of the eye here as well, which might well um, scratch the handle. You can see here, you see all these like little bits here, uh, the bits that are poking up, there's a slight like, ridge there already. Um, that is because of the, um, the unsmooth steel on the inside of the head. So I will need to sand those out as well, which um, I'll do at some point later on today. But for now, as I said, I'm gonna get on with um, trying to get the paint off this. Let's see if we can get this sticker off first. So 
I'm going to use a sandpaper that is P120, um, so it's not massively coarse, namely because I want to uh, I want to get the paint off, but I don't want to damage the steel underneath. So I'm going to start with this, um, and hopefully, hopefully the paint will come off relatively easily, uh, and I won't damage the steel too much. So let's do that. looking better already. This might take a little while so I'll, um, I'll shut the camera off and I'll get back to you when I'm done. We're getting there. Okay, so I think I'm just about done sanding the head itself. Part of the reason that I did this by hand was because I actually wanted to leave a little bit of the paint on uh, in between the steel. So it looks a little bit like that. So it looks a little bit more rustic uh, and a little bit more kind of uh, rough rather than... Because uh, what I could have done is buy some sort of industrial paint stripper and have it completely taken off and then buff the metal and had it really sort of shining bright. But I didn't really want that. I wanted it to look a little bit more... Um, a little bit more, I guess, traditional and, and as I said, rough, so that's why I've done that. So what I'm going to do now, once I've sanded it, um, is inside here, inside the eye, as I said before, there's a load of kind of sharp burrs, which I need to take off, so I'm going to use a file, uh, and I'm just going to go around the inside and just take all of that off. Um, you might notice that I haven't uh, sanded off the black paint from the inside of the eye, uh, namely because, well, I don't really need to. It's going to be in the handle, you're not going to see it, it doesn't really make any difference, so I'm just going to leave that. <clears throat> okay, filing. So I'm pretty happy with how the head has turned out. As I say, it's not perfect, but you know what? I like the way it looks, and you know what? That's the most important when you're doing this kind of stuff. It's doing what's right for you, uh, and I really like it. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna call that good. Done all the insides there now nice and smooth, including where the screw used to be on the other side. There were a few little burrs on there that could catch the wood, so I've gotten rid of those, and we're now nice and smooth. So the only thing that's left to do um, is give this a wash uh, just in some water and then um, put some uh, gun oil on it, some WD-40 kind of stuff just to, uh, to protect the steel and stop it rusting. So I've just got an old washing up bowl, nothing in it, just some water and I'm just going to rinse this off now. Okay, so lastly I'm just going to treat the steel with some Bisley gun oil, nothing overly dramatic, but it'll just help to um, maintain the wood, uh, wood, maintain the steel.
All right, there we go. So I'm going to put that to one side for now. And we'll um, have a look at the handle. So with my handle, what I want to do is firstly stain it um, and also, um, as I said earlier, etch a pattern into the handle here as well. Uh, but before I get to any to doing any of that, if the, uh, if the stain is actually going to take, I'm going to need to sand. There's a sort of a uh, not particularly pleasant sort of varnishy type thing on here. I'm not sure what it is, but I need to get that off. So I need to sand off my handle um, in order for the stain to take. The other thing that I need to do is take off and smooth down some of the burrs up here. Um, as you can see, the, there is little ridges here um, where the head was rammed on before. Uh, and I'm, if I'm going to use a friction fit, which is, which is what I want so I don't have to use this, um, this little screw um, to keep the head in place. Uh, if I'm going to use friction, then I need to get these off so I can, um, the handle's nice and smooth and the head will just um, fix on. So I'm going to really gently use a file to start with, just to see if I can get these burrs out. with some sandpaper in a minute once this is a bit smoother. Now I'm going to sand the whole thing down. I'm going to use a slightly finer um, sandpaper than I did with the metal because obviously I don't want to damage the wood if I can avoid it so I'm going to get on with that um, and again I'll get back to you once, uh, once it's done so I'm not going to make you watch me sanding that would be fairly boring I feel Right, sanding complete. I have a really nice, soft and smooth piece of hickory now for my handle. Uh, and now the moment of truth. I should, if this works, the handle uh, should now fix itself to the head and I shouldn't need the horrible little screw and it shouldn't rattle anymore. If it does not, success! That's on there nice and tight. I can swing it around. There's no danger of it going anywhere. And I just need the mallet to get it off. Nice. Okay. Now that the sanding is done, what I wanted to do was uh, customize it a bit more to make it more personal to me. <clears throat> so nobody else in the world is going to have a uh, trail hawk like this one. So I want to put a pattern into the handle. So I need to think about what I actually want to put into it. I was thinking something quite simple. I really like Norse mythology and sort of Viking um, stories and things like that. So I was thinking something from that era, something very, very Nordic. So I'm going to have a quick look, a quick bit of research on the old internet, uh, and I'll let you know what I come up with in a moment. Alright, so I'll come up with my basic design. I've added some grip for where my hands are going to be and I've put a couple of uh, Nordic runes for protection and strength um, on the shaft, either side of the shaft itself. So now the tricky part comes where I have to try and carve this stuff into the wood. I have absolutely no experience when it comes to carving so uh, I don't know what's going to happen but we're going to try. Um, hopefully I don't mess it up too bad. So uh, let's have a go. <clears throat> So to start with, I'm going to use a triangle file to do more of the straight lines around, which separate the uh, separate the grip bit at least. I might have to use the triangle to do the whole of the runes. I don't know, but we're going to have a go. We're going to try and keep this as straight as possible. Also, 
course I don't want to go too deep because that would ruin it. Okay, since the last time I had the camera on, I have managed to carve out all of the ringlets that go around my uh, shaft using the triangle file. And I've also, on this side at least, carved out the crosses for the, uh, the handle as well. Uh, I did this using the round file instead. Now, I know it's a little bit slapdash, hopefully you can see that, uh, a little bit rough and not particularly straight, but you know what, I actually kind of like that. I think, um, you know, back when people were carving these for real, they wouldn't have had protractors and, you know, ways to make things uh, exactly so. So I quite like the fact that it's a little bit rough. Um, so I've done that side, as I say, so now I've got to do this side uh, as well. So I'm going to crack on with that. This is kind of time consuming and I feel like my brain is starting to melt. <laughs> um, but uh, I do actually like the way it looks, so we're going to carry on. <clears throat> It's quite tricky getting the hang of this, especially considering how long the file that I'm using is. I think if I had a shorter one it would make a big, big difference, but I don't. So I'm just very carefully and gently starting off the cross and then build our way into it later on. Alright folks, we are done with carving. So I finally managed to get the handle done, which I really quite like. Uh, I did carve in one of the runes, but it was quite tricky, so I kind of have abandoned the other one, uh, namely because I don't think it's very good and I don't want to try and do it again and it'd be really bad. So, uh, so all I need to do now is give this another quick sand, a uh, little rub down with some uh, sandpaper, and then I'm going to get the uh, wood stain uh, and start staining this. So yeah, although so far, really happy. Uh, I think, let's just have a quick look. Stay on there. What do you think? Looks pretty cool, eh? I like it. Right, wood stain. <clears throat> Right, I've got some oil that I'm going to put on my handle, which is Bird Brand Craftsman's Range Teak Oil, which is for perfect for revitalising and enriching hardwood furniture in the garden or hot dry areas you know, with UV filters and uh, other stuff. So, uh, I've been assured that this is a good thing to use on my handle and will stain the wood um, ever so slightly, uh, which is ideal. I don't want my handle to be this horrible white colour uh, if I can avoid it. So. Uh, it will need a fair few coats and there'll be large amounts of time I would imagine in between Yeah, so it's uh, shake the can before opening and apply with a brush or cloth. I'm going to use a cloth Work the teak oil into the grain and ensure to wipe off any excess after 15 minutes um, uh, Yeah, it's advisable to do it at the beginning or end of summer <laughs> What are you going to do? Uh, and leave for 24 hours before recoating. Well, I don't think I have the patience for that, but we shall see. Um, I'll have to put a couple of coats on it at least, but yeah, let's get on with it. <clears throat> Might stand up to do this actually.
Alrighty, so that's the first coat done. So I have to leave that for 15 minutes or so before wiping off the excess and then leave it to dry for quite a few hours before we put on a second coat. I don't know if this is going to stain the wood as dark as I would like it, so I might find something else to go on afterwards, but we'll see. Alright, <clears throat> check back in with it. In a bit. Alright, so just as a quick update, I decided that the teak oil wasn't quite staining the wood enough, it wasn't dark enough, so I've gone for an actual wood stain uh, in medium oak instead, which has added a much nicer colour, as you can see, to the handle. Um, so this is only two or three coats, which each takes sort of six to eight hours to dry, if not longer, maybe even a day. Um, so probably call that a day for today, working on the axe. Um, uh, but tomorrow I'll obviously I'll restain it again, put a couple more coats in, and I will get back with you guys um, once it's all dry and once the axe is finished. Looking forward to it. I think it looks pretty good so far. Well, there we have it folks, after two days we're finally finished. The handle is dry, the head is on securely, and I'm gonna call it done. Uh, I'm really, really pleased with the way it turned out. I think it looks so much cooler than it did when I first got it. Uh, and most importantly as well, it's unique to me, so nobody else in the world has a tomahawk like this. Uh, and I finally have a useful, viable tool. So thank you very much for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you feel slightly inspired and maybe even wanna have a go at doing this yourself. Uh, as always, please feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.